Welcome to Zero Trust Cyber Tips and Tricks. In today's video we will be talking about MITRE ATT and CK tactics and techniques. If you're in the cybersecurity field, you may have heard of this framework, but what exactly is it and how can it be used to improve your organization's security? In this video series, we'll give you an overview of what MITRE ATT and CK is and take a closer look at the tactics and techniques used by attackers. Introduction to MITRE ATT&CK MITRE ATT and CK is a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques based on real-world observations. The attack knowledge base is used as a foundation for the development of specific threat models and methodologies in the private sector, in government, and in the cybersecurity product and service community. MITRE ATT&CK, short for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge, is a framework that provides a comprehensive understanding of the methods and tactics used by cyber attackers. The framework is organized into a matrix that includes different tactics on the vertical axis, such as initial access, execution, persistence, etc. Part 6. Understanding Privilege Escalation. The adversary is trying to gain higher level permissions. Privilege escalation consists of techniques that adversaries use to gain higher level permissions on a system or network. Adversaries can often enter and explore a network with unprivileged access but require elevated permissions to follow through on their objectives. Common approaches are to take advantage of system weaknesses, misconfigurations, and vulnerabilities. Examples of elevated access include system, root level, local administrator, user account with admin-like access, user accounts with access to specific system or perform specific function. These techniques often overlap with persistence techniques, as OS features that let an adversary persist can execute in an elevated context. There are various techniques that can be used for privilege escalation, some of which includes Abuse Elevation Control Mechanism Adversaries may circumvent mechanisms designed to control elevate privileges to gain higher level permissions. Most modern systems contain native elevation control mechanisms that are intended to limit privileges that a user can perform on a machine. Authorization has to be granted to specific users in order to perform tasks that can be considered of higher risk. An adversary can perform several methods to take advantage of built-in control mechanisms in order to escalate privileges on a system. Bypass user account control. Adversaries may bypass UAC mechanisms to elevate process privileges on system. Windows User Account Control, UAC, allows a program to elevate its privileges, tracked as integrity levels ranging from low to high, to perform a task under administrator level permissions, possibly by prompting the user for confirmation. The impact to the user ranges from denying the operation under high enforcement to allowing the user to perform the action if they are in the local administrator's group and click through the prompt or allowing them to enter an administrator password to complete the action. Access token manipulation. Adversaries may modify access tokens to operate under a different user or system security context to perform actions and bypass access controls. Windows uses access tokens to determine the ownership of a running process. A user can manipulate access tokens to make a running process appear as though it is the child of a different process or belongs to someone other than the user that started the process. When this occurs, the process also takes on the security context associated with the new token. Token impersonation, theft. Adversaries may duplicate then impersonate another user's token to escalate privileges and bypass access controls. An adversary can create a new access token that duplicates an existing token using duplicate token, X. The token can then be used with impersonate logged on user to allow the calling thread to impersonate a logged on user security context, or with set thread token to assign the impersonated token to a thread. Boot or log on auto start execution. Adversaries may configure system settings to automatically execute a program during system boot or logon to maintain persistence or gain higher level privileges on compromised systems. Operating systems may have mechanisms for automatically running a program on system boot or account logon. These mechanisms may include automatically executing programs that are placed in specially designated directories or are referenced by repositories that store configuration information, such as the Windows registry. An adversary may achieve the same goal by modifying or extending features of the kernel. Registry run keys, startup folder. 
Adversaries may achieve persistence by adding a program to a startup folder or referencing it with a registry run key. Adding an entry to the run keys in the registry or startup folder will cause the program reference to be executed when a user logs in. These programs will be executed under the context of the user and will have the account's associated permissions level. Boot or logon initialization scripts. Adversaries may use scripts automatically executed at boot or logon initialization to establish persistence. Initialization scripts can be used to perform administrative functions, which may often execute other programs or send information to an internal logging server. These scripts can vary based on operating system and whether applied locally or remotely. Login hook. Adversaries may use a login hook to establish persistence executed upon user logon. A login hook is a plist file that points to a specific script to execute with root privileges upon user logon. The plist file is located in the library preferences com apple login window plist file and can be modified using the default's command line utility. This behavior is the same for logout hooks where a script can be executed upon user logout. All hooks require administrator permissions to modify or create hooks. Create or modify system process. Adversaries may create or modify system level processes to repeatedly execute malicious payloads as part of persistence. When operating systems boot up, they can start processes that perform background system functions. On Windows and Linux, these system processes are referred to as services. On macOS, launch processes known as launch daemon and launch agent are run to finish system initialization and load user specific parameters. Event triggered execution. Adversaries may establish persistence and or elevate privileges using system mechanisms that trigger execution based on specific events. Various operating systems have means to monitor and subscribe to events such as logons or other user activity such as running specific applications, binaries. Cloud environments may also support various functions and services that monitor and can be invoked in response to specific cloud events. DLL sideloading. Adversaries may execute their own malicious payloads by sideloading DLLs. Similar to DLL search order hijacking, sideloading involves hijacking which DLL a program loads. But rather than just planting the DLL within the search order of a program then waiting for the victim application to be invoked, adversaries may directly sideload their payloads by planting then invoking a legitimate application that executes their payloads. Mitigating privilege escalation attacks involves implementing a combination of technical and administrative controls. 1. Implementing least privilege access controls. This means giving users the lowest level of access necessary to perform their job functions. 2. Regularly reviewing and managing user accounts. This includes disabling or removing accounts of employees who have left the organization. 3. Implementing multi-factor authentication. This can help prevent unauthorized access to privileged accounts. 4. Implementing endpoint protection software. This can help to detect and block malware and other malicious software that could be used to escalate privileges. 5. Regularly patching and updating software and systems. This can help to address known vulnerabilities that could be exploited to escalate privileges. 6. Implementing security controls such as firewalls and intrusion detection and prevention systems. These can help to monitor and block unauthorized access attempts. 7. Regularly monitoring and analyzing network traffic. This can help to detect suspicious activity that could indicate an attempted privilege escalation. 8. Implementing security awareness and training program for employees. This can help to educate employees about the importance of security and the risks of phishing and social engineering attacks. 9. Having an incident response plan in place and regularly testing it. This can help ensure readiness in case of any attack. 10. Implementing security configurations management. This can help to enforce security policies across the network and detect any unauthorized changes. It's important to note that privilege escalation is a critical part of an attacker's strategy. Organizations should continuously monitor and update their security controls and procedures to address new and emerging threats and detect any privilege escalation attempts. MITRE ATT and CK framework provides a comprehensive understanding of the techniques and methods used by attackers to persistence and can help organizations to identify potential vulnerabilities and implement countermeasures to prevent privilege escalation. For more information about privilege escalation, 
Go to MITRE website, at https colon slash slash attack .org. In the next video we will be talking about MITRE attack, defense evasion. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity tips and tricks.